This is Meng here from agentsofspeech.com. Today we're talking about how gestures can actually help your child to speak longer and actually learn words. Before we get onto this video, I just really want to thank everyone who is watching these videos. At this moment in time of this recording, we have around 150 subscribers on our channel and I'm very grateful for that. If you think about it, it's kind of like a small lecture hall and I'm really happy to be able to talk about these kind of things um, with you all without actually having a physical location do you come to a seminar and, and listen into this and if you're listening to this as a parent it means that you really want to improve the way that you are as a person to help your child in the best way and i really really appreciate it okay let's get into the video right now and stay tuned okay so i've been teaching using gestures as a way to expand language and to and for children to actually um, learn certain words, okay? So if you think about speech delay children, what they are lacking in is actually the way in that they acquire words. So you al always hear about speech therapists talk about, oh, how many words does your child have? If you've done that questionnaire in the beginning of uh, a therapy session and why we put so much emphasis on the number of words acquired is because Children tend to combine words at the round when they hit like 150 words acquired in a certain language. But the thing is, there's different studies about it. I'm not going to go into detail about this. Some say 150, some say north of 200 or something, but it doesn't matter. The, the thing is we have to teach vocabs, okay? And how we do it is basically through gestures or something. And this is from my own clinical observation is that nouns are pretty easily learned by uh, children. And the reason is there's, there's a deep library of videos on YouTube that does a very good job in teaching uh, nouns and names of places, fruits, vegetables, you know, dinosaurs, whatever to kids. Whereas there aren't a lot of verbs that they actually teach on videos. And if you think about it, if your child right now is stuck at like one word or like no words yet, the things that they know uh, in the beginning are the nouns because it's solid. You can see it and you know what it is. So let's say you see like a cup. Obviously that's a cup because you can see and touch it, but verbs are a little more abstract. And why I want to talk about learning, uh, expanding vocab especially in verbs is because that's usually what you do when you mix the words together to form a sentence you're not gonna say two nouns together um, per se like you wouldn't say cup and book that's not really communicating you're just like telling them there's cup and book right there usually what the first things that according to milestones of course I'm gonna link some milestones in the description uh, is that the first sentences that we learn are actually like verb plus a noun or like an adjective plus a noun so on and so forth and you see that you know there's something always accompanying the noun okay so it's my own personal observation that these are lacking and even if they actually know those stuff they don't know how to put it together so i wanted to tell you what's in my mind and what i actually read as a therapist i'm going to share with you a certain article here that i found on the internet that's a little more a less academic that I can share with you guys. I'm just gonna read a little bit and I'll show you on the screen as well. So I wanted to share this article. This is actually a summary article of the main article and it's called Hand Gestures Boost Spoken and Sign Language Learning. This article is actually written by uh, Susan Golden Mido. I might be butchering the name, I'm so sorry. And she's a, actually a, a professor at the University uh, of Chicago, Department of Psychology. And the extra I wanted to talk about was this one right here, and I'll read it out for you guys. Children who can hear use gesture along with speech to communicate as they acquire spoken language. She says, those gesture plus word combinations precede and predict the acquisition of word combinations that convey the same notions. The findings make it clear that children have an understanding of these notions before they are able to express them in speech gesture is something that children understand and it comes before speech because there's some meaning into it and to talk about this right now um, why i talk about meaning is because when you're learning a language you're always learning the link between uh, the speech to the meaning the speech to the meaning okay the speech sound to the meaning and what the meaning is is the thing around in the world that we understand that we look at okay and when we map that link 
is what we call mapping. When you see a huge explosion in the acquisition of word and children, we call it fast mapping. So I want to talk about the main article, which I showed you the summary article. It's much more simple, but there is actually a section inside which is very, very important when you need to understand increasing sentence length with gestures. So let's not talk about the title. I know it's very intimidating and stuff, but anyways, it's right here. I'll also drop the link for this article if you would like to venture into it. So in this part, it says sentences, which is, yay, we're talking about how to increase the length of a sentence when teaching a, a child who is speech delayed. So I'll read this part, just this part and, uh, and here. Okay, so I'm going to start now. But children do often combine their gestures with words and they produce these gestures plus speech combinations well before they produce word plus word combinations. So what that means is that children will start to use gestures plus, plus words well before they actually put two words together. So we have to help them by te actually teaching them the gestures, right? And cho children's earliest gestures plus speech combinations contain gestures that convey information that complements the information conveyed in speech. For example, now you got to take a look at this example. Pointing at a ball, saying ball, soon after, children begin to produce combinations in which gestures convey the information that is different from and supplements the information conveyed in the accompanying speech. For example, pointing at a ball while saying here to request the ball to be moved to a particular spot. What this means is that before your child gets onto two or three word combinations, your best bet is actually to teach gestures so that your child will understand the meaning of putting two things together. Okay, they're gonna use gestures to actually help them start to combine two meanings together to help them to uh, talk in longer, longer sentences. When you're using gestures, to increase sentence length. What you need to do is to actually introduce a bunch of vocabulary so that they can map the words towards the gestures and the meaning. And I wanna say thank you to my clients right here. The mom is actually trying her best to do therapy whilst they cannot come to me. And a little backstory, this boy over here, he cannot really do three word sentences yet. He's kinda of stuck at like one to two words and what we're doing right now is to introduce play sequences to make him understand the sequence and the context and how to use this kind of language in his play so that it makes sense. So check this out. That was a really good trial. As you can see, the mother actually used the gesture cue to cue all the speech. The kid was looking at the mom for hints and he got it. He got to say the whole three words in a sentence. Good job. Very open window. And similarly, it's still the same. He was looking for cues from the mom and the mother gave the cue for sitting. Obviously, we have to teach the child how to use uh, the gestures in the beginning and what it actually means. And then we can use it as a cue to increase a sentence length. So it makes sense for this child to uh, say and comment on it because he's actually gone through this play sequence without the language first and now he understands that when he says it he gets to do it and mom says it one more time and does some uh, sound effects sometimes and it's pretty fun so he's actually motivated to do it and it has become a routine for him. And as a bonus I want to show you guys this video which is i am super proud of by the way the child finally understands the gestures enough to use it by himself when this happens basically it's very good because now he can self cue himself in his brain or he could act it out so look at this see he cued the sitting gesture and he's able to do that. That means the next time he might be able to self cue himself and finish the sentence. So great job. And I really want to tell you guys that this isn't really far away from you guys. And you guys can actually use this at home and start making this all happen for yourself. And all you have to do if your child is still at one word level 
obviously use the gesture to make them talk one word at a time first but if they're, you're stuck at like one to two words you can totally use gestures to help them out okay so thank you so much i hope this was helpful thank you so much for checking out this video if you want to check out the academic papers that i talked about it'll be linked down below if you have any comments whether you disagree agree or uh, have troubles implementing this stuff at home please put them in the comments below and let me know it also makes me to become a better therapist because you know it challenges my thought process and so on and so forth and before you leave i want to give you a gift which is frequently asked questions all in video format is actually part of our online course these videos will help you answer pretty much all the questions that i get the most as a speech therapist at my own private clinic so head to www.agentsofspeech.com faq faq for frequently asked questions there will be around eight videos that I've made and uh, pre-recorded to answer those questions that you might have in mind. All right, go so, so go check it out. Lastly, please like and subscribe. And remember, whenever you like and you comment, it helps the YouTube algorithm to tell YouTube to send these videos to more people like yourself, more parents who need this information at home right now, okay? So thank you so much again. I'll see you in the next video real soon. Bye.